if you don't opt in, you'll leave the meeting. <laughs> All right. Uh, good morning, January 16th, 2024. I have somewhat adjusted to the fact that it's a new year. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, we have time here to meditate for about 20 minutes and then uh, discuss a uh, some sort of topic that hopefully supports people. I'm, I'm starting my, um, my anyway, uh, a living kindness course this afternoon. Uh, if anybody's interested in joining, I presume you can still join. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things I, I think about, like, or one of the things I've noticed in my my own work when I'm writing about some particular topic is that my mind starts to really focus on that and I start to see that more and more and and remember that um, and so I think one of the really helpful things about taking a class is that it just brings up that aspect of your practice and uh, you know, even if you're not like, it, it's not so much about the content of, of the material, like what did I learn? What do I know? But but really just the immediate impact of like, oh, I'm thinking about loving kindness a lot right now. And so compassion is coming to mind a lot or equanimity is coming to mind. or So um, just, yeah, just a thought. I, I You know, and I think it's a, a good... Um, rule of thumb, shall we say, as a, 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 for each of us, however we sort of characterize our, our path, um, our spiritual path, to sort of take up different um, themes as they arise, as they arise spontaneously, or if we happen to be reading a book and just, and to, and, and really to say, oh, okay, let me really like, make that my focus for a week or a month or a year. Um, and, and I guess that, that was part of the purpose of my, my uh, daily reflections book was to give people th uh, focuses, you know, daily focus, but um, uh, something to kind of have a theme in mind. Uh, so much of our practice is just remembering the Dharma and not getting lost in our own uh, habitual thoughts and emotional and behavioral patterns. So there's a little um, <laughs> prompt for us all to start. So let's let's begin with a a nice sit and um, just settling into the body. The mindfulness of the body. I, I particularly find the, the phrasing that the Buddha uses when he, when he begins the teachings on meditation in, in, in this, in the, uh, Foundations of mindfulness and the mindfulness of breathing. And, you know, he suggests going to a quiet place. You know, he talks about the forest or an empty hut, but really just a quiet place. And setting the body erect, he says. And this isn't about some rigid posture really just connecting first with the body and feeling how we're holding it, how we hold our body is both a expression of our mind states and emotional states, and it's also a cause of mind states and emotional states. So if we intentionally bring some effort to trying to find a place of balance and alignment. 
can make an immediate shift and sometimes a calming, sometimes a clarifying, just the feeling of being centered physically, grounded. And then he says, putting mindfulness to the fore. So just establishing this intention to be present for our experience. Ever mindful breathing in, ever mindful breathing out. All of this is related to the first foundation of mindfulness, awareness of the body. But it's not simply awareness of the body. There is an application of specific efforts in terms of posture, in terms of breath, awareness of breath. We can certainly be aware or mindful when we're in a slumped posture. Or I think it's just pointing to the, the benefit of sitting erect and how that tends to bring more clarity to the mind. So this is one of the things we can investigate. How does the way I hold my body affect my mind states and what goes on in my mind, in my feelings? We don't have to control our breathing, but we let the attention just settle on the sensations and the movement of breath. Wherever you find that easiest to do, whether at the nostrils or the chest or belly, or feeling the whole of the breath. And there are different approaches we can take to bringing mindfulness to the breath. And we need to just attune to what's most helpful in each moment. Sometimes it feels most useful to just zero in very precisely the details of sensation of breath. And this can help develop a certain kind of 
focus and concentration. Where you're following the touch, just the touch sensation, just the feelings of the whole inhalation, the whole exhalation. Noticing all the various sensations, experiences in that breath, in each breath. At other times, and, and this can happen in the same sitting that we move different perspectives. We may open up a bit more, just feel the breath in the body so that we're aware of the whole body and feeling the breath more generally in the body. Or we could call this a more open awareness. In this process, it's naturally going to be the tendency to lapse into thinking, to lose touch with the breath and the body. So our most basic, most essential task is to return, to keep coming back to the breath and the body. This is an expression of our intention to be present. Setting that intention doesn't guarantee that we will stay present, but it acts as a reminder. When the mind wanders, that our intention was to be here, and thus we come back and start again. And as we open to the breath in the body, noticing the thoughts, quite natural times to, to start to notice other subtle experiences, the feeling, the feeling realm, the realm of emotion and felt experience. Being touched internally. Feeling the inner life and resonance. 
thoughts and feelings. And continuing then to breathe with this more subtle realm as well.
I don't know how many people were um, who were here were at the um, Spirit Rock uh, class on Friday night. Um, but uh, if you're interested, um, that's you can listen to my talk. I, I get, I, the reason I bring it up is because um, it's uh, about uh, I was talking about um, the eleventh step specifically um and um and you know I'm, I, this is something i'm doing a little writing around is sort of the the um uh kind of just sort of comparing the the way bill wilson talks about step 12 and the way the way we think about it in Buddhism. I, I find it kind of interesting, particularly, um, you know, when I, when I start to really um, think seriously about it and realize that, like the things that we think of in the Buddhist world as meditation, most of those things are completely absent from the, from the, uh, certainly Bill Wilson's understanding in, in the, the broader 12-step literature, things like mindfulness, things like the, paying attention to a meditation object, um, you know, the wandering mind, the hindrances, um, cultivating loving kindness. Now, some of these things are implied and suggested kind of, in a, I guess, yeah, implied, I'd say. <laughs> certainly the hindrances but and the wandering mind but but not in any kind of practical way that and I, and I think that's certainly one of the reasons why many of us turn to to Buddhism uh, as a as a way of working with that part of the steps um, in any case there's a lot more uh, about that so um, just if you are interested uh, I'm going to uh, find